everyone it is Danny and welcome to this update video and so we will be talking about what is currently taking place across the tropics so uh, if you guys have noticed I haven't posted for quite some time now well over a week and that is due to things being pretty quiet but in this video we will be taking a look at what's currently going on across the tropics the Atlantic and the Pacific basins as well as what to expect going forward and so before I go into details Okay, and so we are starting off with the Eastern Pacific and then over in the Atlantic, we will be taking a look at current conditions that are present, such as the abundant Saharan dust. All right, so over in the Eastern Pacific, we have two systems. We have Hurricane Darby as well as another disturbance designated as Invest 96E that is well offshore. So let's first talk about that disturbance. So as you're seeing, it is given a high 90% chance to possibly develop into a tropical cyclone during the next five days while through the next 48 hours it is given a 40 percent chance to possibly develop and so the formation chance is pretty high for this system which means that we could definitely see something become of it i mean the eastern pacific is so active right now and it is contrasting what is going on over in the atlantic basin so the next name to be used for the eastern pacific hurricane season is estelle and uh, let's see if this is going to become estelle but i think it certainly will become a named storm over there and will likely parallel the southwestern coast of Mexico. And so looking at it on satellites here, we're seeing that it is not very organized, but it is getting better organized. We see that we have quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity taking place within that disturbance, and we're definitely going to be seeing it looking better as time goes by because things should be conducive ahead of it to enable it to develop into a tropical cyclone. And so now let's go ahead and move on to Darby. So Darby is a weakening hurricane hurricane over in the eastern pacific and so darby uh, is very small as well and it is a very sneaky cyclone i mean in 24 hours it gained 65 knots so it peaked uh, as a category 4 hurricane a few days ago with maximum sustained winds of 140 miles per hour and right now it is looking so beautiful even though it is actually dissipating slowly but it is looking very symmetrical right now we have that very clear eye and uh, uh, it is currently a category 2 hurricane so now let us go ahead and take a look at the uh, cone forecast from the national hurricane center regarding darby and so here we have it and we're seeing that it is expected to weaken to a tropical storm maybe by sometime tomorrow and then become post tropical by friday and likely it will dissipate by this weekend and the remnants are most likely going to be making their way south of the big island of Hawaii. So Darby is slowly approaching the end of its life. It's moving from conducive conditions going into more hostility. And so that is going to be inducing weakening of the system. And so guys, that is what is going on over in the Eastern Pacific Basin. So now let's go ahead and journey into the Atlantic. And we are seeing here that we have some activity taking place, but things are very quiet quiet right now uh, thanks to the Saharan dust that is very abundant right now across the tropical Atlantic. So uh, we see some convection just off the coast of Africa as well as in portions of Central America, the Gulf of Mexico and uh, lingering out there in the Atlantic. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that Saharan dust map. And so as we head to more of the oranges and the reds and that pinkish shade, that indicates that we have more of an abundance of uh, dry air out there and so we see that we have a mass of that uh moving across the Caribbean right now so that is Blanketon Islands such as Jamaica the Cayman Islands maybe portions of Haiti and Cuba as well are having hazy skies as a result of all of this dry air and out in the Atlantic things are really just so hostile right now so all this dry air is really the opposite of what tropical cyclones need which is moisture so tropical cyclones need a very moist environment in order to develop and grow so we don't see any of that right now for 
the Atlantic. And this is kind of typical of July because last year there was no tropical cyclone that developed in the month of July. So uh, there was only Elsa that developed late June and lasted until the early part of July. But aside from that, there was no development for quite a while. And so that is sort of the same thing that we're seeing here. Although we've had two systems in July, which were Bonnie and Colin. Uh, Bonnie developed on the first, Colin developed on the second. So uh, aside from those two systems, we've not had anything. And it doesn't look as though maybe for the next week or two weeks, we will see anything major. But again, all this Saharan dust might bring some impacts, especially in terms of health concerns. So guys, it's best to stay indoors and stay hydrated as much as you can because things are already pretty hot and uh, the dust might result in allergic reactions, guys. So please uh, ensure that you're aware of that and taking the necessary steps to keep yourself in the best of health. And uh, going on to the ocean temperature map right now, things are very warm, especially in the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, anything that is going to be developing and moving into the Gulf of Mexico, especially as we are going to be heading into August, we definitely have to keep an eye on it. I would not be surprised if we see some crazy intensification in the Gulf of Mexico this year because uh, ocean temperatures are just so favorable right now. But we don't really have uh, anything moving into the Gulf uh, that we could possibly see developing. But there was a disturbance that was lingering along the Gulf Coast states of the US, but that failed to become anything. So there is no chance for that to develop, but it could bring rain to portions of the Gulf Coast states. And so guys, as you're going to be heading into the month of August, we definitely have to look out for more Cabo Verde type tropical cyclones. Uh, August and September at that, because we typically have all these systems making their way uh, off the coast of Africa as tropical waves propagating westward and developing as they move uh, to the Caribbean or maybe to the US. So this is what we should expect as we are going to be heading into the month of August. So the Caribbean, the Gulf, the East Coast definitely have to be on watch for potentially dangerous systems uh, as we're going to be nearing the peak of this hurricane season. But that is really what's going on for now guys. So we don't really have anything major to take a look at. Model are not showing anything developing either so we can expect that things will be quiet for a while and so the next name to be used on the list of names for the Atlantic hurricane season is Danielle which is actually my name as well so I am looking forward to see what type of system Daniel is going to be will it be very weak or will it be strong or maybe just an average tropical cyclone so I am anticipating that to see how much of a storm I can be this hurricane season but that is really it for now guys and so I will be given all of the necessary updates on the tropics as time goes by. And so if you found this video to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up. And you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question. I will try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be with wise.